You look young, so you must be escaping school. Backstory. So in my school, there are a lot of kids, and in consequence, a lot of divisions. First year A to first year R. The school organized a schedule that makes divisions leave school in different times, so the streets don't fill up with students that want to go home. My division has to leave at 12.15pm on Fridays, important for later, and this is what generates the encounter. By the way, in my country, it's really weird to find an entitled parent, so I didn't think of the possibility of meeting one. Our car star, me, a 13 year old boy, male, entitled mother, around 30 years old that judges people by their looks, female, and FOD, friend of dad, aka my savior, who's a male. Story. So, before getting into the subway to get home, I usually take the bus, I bought myself an empanada to celebrate that I made it to the winter holidays without failing any subject. So I hop into the subway, eat my empanada, and start playing Brawl Stars. As I finished the empanada and the match of heist, FOD, friend of dad's, approaches me. We chat for a bit, then he goes to sit in another wagon. I'm three stops from my house when Entitled Mother gets into the subway, and she starts looking at me weird. I understand because I don't look like I'm my age. A few schools do what mine does, what I told you to remember. So, I just finished a showdown match, when she, out of nowhere, taps me on the shoulder. Hey kiddo, where's your mum? I try not to punch her. I'm okay with people that mistake me with a younger kid, but I hate when they treat me like one. Sorry miss, but I'm travelling alone. That's impossible. No it's not, I'm 13. I go to, insert school name, and I can travel alone. I put my phone away just in case she wants to steal or something. No, you can't. Don't lie to me. You're like eight or nine. You should be at school. You shouldn't even have an iPhone X. I have an LG Q6. Now I'm enraged and I go, Then how did I get on here without someone stopping me? I have my ticket with me and my phone is not an iPhone. The entitled mother then raises her voice. Don't talk to me like that. You're escaping school. No, I'm not. My school lets my division go out earlier at Fridays. You're lying! I'll take you with your mum! I don't know how did you escape and get here with no trouble! Gosh! I don't know how she associated school with mum, but that stupidity leaves me in shock for a second, and she knew it. She grabs me by the arm, and starts walking to the next wagon. Now, I really hate conflict, but I did some Taekwondo, so I try to leave, but she doesn't let go. So I take a deep breath, and I grab her arm and throw her to the floor. And everyone in the wagon just felt that they should leave. Frick you spectators, thank you for helping me, mate. Oh my god, how could you do that? You're a nasty child, you go back to school now! I'm on the verge of tears. I didn't expect the entitled mother to do that, and I don't know what to do. And when she tries to grab me again, the friend of dad grabs her arms and pushes her back. What the frick are you doing? Stay out of this! No, I'm his father. He's 13 and I'm trying to teach him how to travel alone in a subway. He pushes me a bit. I don't know what he wants to do. I don't believe you! Then friend of dad proceeds to tell the entitled mother my name and surname and all members of my family. Dad, mum, little brother. That's not proof! I'll find his real mother! My stop is coming up, so just before the doors close, the friend of dad runs out of the train with me in tow. Entitled mother couldn't do the same. We start coming back from the adrenaline rush. I check my bag if I lost something, and we walk to my home. When we arrive, we tell everything to my parents and that they were shocked, but later we had all lunch together, and that made this a funny thing. Thank you for reading. And if you think this is fake, believe me, it is not. I'm still in shock about the stupidity of some people, and how did I meet an entitled parent? I mean, come on. Please show love and like this video. Have a good day. Our next story was posted by user Jamilton76, titled, Entitled Parent Lets Kids Treat Wheelchair as a Toy. You know the drill. I'm on mobile and English is my one and only language. Let's go. Meet the cast, me. Entitled mother, the idiot mom with no manners. Entitled kid, 
they're not super entitled, but still. And D, Dad, who was just a helpless husband. So, it was a normal Saturday night and I was working at my job. I work at a major retail store. Not going to say the name, but it rhymes with souls. The rush we get on most Saturdays had calmed down and my coworker and I were straightening the floor. She works the registers while I'm a floor person. We were folding down the floor when our entitled mother, entitled kid and dad came in. Now for context, our store has two wheelchairs for customers who need them to use freely. I have a particular protective stance on them as my sister also uses one on her bad days due to her multiple sclerosis and people like to misuse them. And here is where our fun story really begins. Entitled Kid was a boy of around 12 and had literally ran into the store all smiles and laughs. Then his eyes zero in on the wheelchair. He goes to grab it and I make my way over to the family and stand slightly in front of the wheelchair. Hello and welcome to Name That Rhymes With Souls. My name is Jamilton76. Can I help you with anything? The kid backs off due to my arrival while the parents tell me their clothes shopping for the kid. They grab a cart and all head off towards the kid's section. I go to check on the rest of the floor and fold where needed. It was a little over five minutes later, I watch the kid zoom back, snatch the wheelchair and take off. I'm ticked and was ready to chase after him, but a lady needed help getting something off of a mannequin, so I put it out of my mind. An hour later, my coworker needed to take her break and I offered to cover her. She hadn't been gone two minutes when who comes to check out? Yup, entitled mother, entitled kid, and dad. But you know what isn't there? The wheelchair. I'm mad. Not only did he take a piece of equipment he honestly didn't need, but he left it God knows where in the store. I'm not about to let that fly. Hello, did you find everything okay? Yeah, but your kid's area is really messy. Liar. My other co-worker who works in that department is beyond OCD and never lets a mess sit. But I ignore that and press on to what I really want to know. I look at the entitled kid. Where's the wheelchair? What? The wheelchair. I saw you take it earlier. Where is it? If it's not in use, it has to be by the front door. His eyes go wide. He knows he's caught, but entitled mother doesn't get it. My son doesn't know anything about a wheelchair. He isn't a disabled person. He's actually useful. Wow, I can't believe she just said that. Neither can the dad, it seems, as he looks at his wife with a mixture of disgust and confusion. Honey, uh, entitled kid was riding it and be quiet. Okay, so now I know what's going on. Clearly, she knew her kid had used it, but didn't care about where he left it. I looked back to Entitled Kid with my stern but still friendly customer service voice, and I tell him, Please go bring it back. We have customers who come in that have to use them to get around. Entitled Kid just nods and scurries off back to where they came. The dad doesn't look irritated, but the Entitled Mother is mad. That was not your job to tell him what to do! Ma'am, my job is to ensure that all customers have their needs met while they're shopping. I can't do that if the crucial equipment for our handicapped customers is not where they can be easily accessed. The entitled mother, giving up on trying to act clueless, says, He was just trying to play with it. He wasn't hurting anyone. Wheelchairs are not toys, ma'am, and he shouldn't be playing with them. She goes quiet, obviously trying to come up with something clever to throw back at me. Failing that, she goes to the classic Karen response. I want your manager. Me shrugging and calm as hell as my manager on duty is a no BS type of person says, Yeah, no problem. Then you can explain to her how your child was misusing store property and you were trying to lie to me about him doing so. If you really want to push this further, I can ask for her to look at our security tapes. Before I can grab my walkie talkie, the dad puts his hands up in a defensive motion. Oh, whoa, whoa. oh that's not necessary. I apologize for my son and wife turns to the Entitled Mother and says, Just stop! She's only doing her job, and I told you back there that Entitled Kid shouldn't have had it. He was just playing. So then the dad and I at the same time say, It's, it's not, not a, a toy. toy! 
And by the time I finished bagging their items, Entitled Kid has come back, pushing the wheelchair back to where he'd taken it from. He rejoined his parents and said a quiet, sorry, to me before they all left the store. The Entitled Mother glaring daggers at me the whole way. I told my co-worker when she got back, and we both had a laugh about it. Moral of the story, don't play with wheelchairs. Our next story was posted by user, excuse me, accuse me, titled, I've never met you, but you're the reason why my son is gay. Hello. Before I start, obligatory mobile user, sorry for the bad formatting, and English is my first language. Our cast are, we know this one, me, OP. Oh, we know this one too, HK, humiliated kid, 16 years old, and MB, my boyfriend, and AW, annoyed worker. Me and my boyfriend were at McDonald's. We wanted fast food, and it was the nearest place, so, hmm. We order a large strawberry milkshake and other things. We asked for two straws and our drink. This is important later. We sit down with our food and start eating normally. There wasn't any customers in the McDonald's besides Entitled Mother and Humiliated Kid. I noticed Humiliated Kid staring at us in an amazed way, but I ignore it. Uh, my boyfriend had no idea. I guess the Entitled Mother thought we were just bros being bros or whatever. Until we both drink our milkshake at the same time. The Entitled Mother starts walking towards us. My bro says, oh boy, because he knows something is up. He always knows. The Entitled Mother in a loud voice goes, Can you two knock it off? What exactly are You're we- You're being gay! My son is probably gay because of the F slur for gay people like you! Uh, mum? Uh, I'm not gay, I'm bisexual- QUIET! I'M SPEAKING! Now, my boyfriend is the type of guy who loves arguing even more than I do. <clears throat> I don't think you're speaking, you're yelling. This made the Entitled Mother very angry, but before she could say anything, I see the annoyed worker running up to us. Miss, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave those boys alone. They've done nothing wrong, yet you're yelling at them for being themselves. But 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 so you're telling me that you want to leave? No, that's what I thought. Sit down and don't argue. Humiliated Kid comes up to us and says, I'm sorry about her actions, y'all are a cute couple but my mum has been anti-anything LGBT since I came out to her. It's so annoying. So my boyfriend and I say, it's okay and thank you so much. My boyfriend then says, mom is the same way. I can't wait till OP and I graduate high school. We might move away together. You should do the same when you're older. TLDR, my boyfriend and I are blamed for the entitled kids being bisexual. Edit, thanks for the support and love and gold. And for anyone wondering, I'm not out to my parents. I haven't had time to read all the comments, but this is the one I saw. Our next story was posted by user FunnyBunnyBread2-0, titled Cover up your bra strap, it's highly inappropriate. So I'm here again. I guess being on holiday attracts entitled people. I'm on phone, so bad for me to yada yada yada. EM, Entitled Mum, IC, Innocent Child, CC, Cool Cousin, and me. So, I was taking a walk earlier this morning, about 9am, with my cousin who barely speaks English. We were walking to an ice cream shop for some breakfast. Ice cream for breakfast, yes I know, cool. So we were sitting outside eating, and despite being early, it was quite warm. So we were just eating and talking as you do, that I noticed this little kid looking at me. I know he's a tourist because he's blonde and paler than me. I don't take any notes and just continue eating. Then I see the kid talking to his mum in a very strong English accent. Then she comes up to me and says very slowly, Can you understand me? Yes, I'm actually British. I thought she wanted me to translate and my cousin is looking confused. Ah, oh, well, oh, I can see your bra strap so you know. Oh, sorry. I pull it up and under my vest strap. Then my cousin in Italian goes, Bapidi bupidi bim bum bum bim bumpidi bimpidi, which roughly translates to, That was weird. 
Then the strap falls again. I don't really care when it happens because I'm a preteen and no one cares. Oh, I'm sorry, but it fell again. Oh, it's fine. I don't mind. Should not have said that. Well, I mind and I don't want my son to get ideas. What ideas would he get from seeing a piece of fabric? My cousin continues in Italian, saying, What is she on about? So I say, she's complaining about my bra strap. Don't swear at me in Italian! I'm not swearing, just translating. Why can't he speak English? Well, he's learning. Mom! Mom, please, let's just go! Now, this kid can't have been older than six. Okay, hold on just a minute. Looks at me. Now, you cover up because it's inappropriate to show bras in public. Okay then, ciao ciao. Ugh. Boopity boopity. The end. Just in case anyone cares, I had one scoop strawberry, one lemon in a bun. Best breakfast you can get. Our next story was posted by user Baby X Gal X, titled Entitled mother-in-law thinks she'll be in the hospital whenever her son and I have a baby. I'm not sure if this goes here, but she's definitely an entitled mother. Backstory. My partner and I have been together for a while, and we are planners. I love talking about the future. At the time of this conversation, which is a few months ago, so I'll do my best to make it as accurate as possible, we were talking about babies, how many we wanted, the names, etc. Entitled mother-in-law, Emil, must have been eavesdropping when I was talking about who will be in the room and the godparents, etc. So the conversation goes, Of course I'll be there! I have to film it for the family! Um, no. You're welcome in the waiting room with everyone else, but the only people allowed in for the birth will be my partner and my mum. Well, why is your mum allowed but I'm not? I demand to be there. It's my grandchild. Yes, it will be your grandchild, but I have severe phobias or hospitals and needles. My mum needs to be there for me so that I know what's going on. Oh, I can do that. I should be there instead of her. She shouldn't be allowed near her after her stupidity. She yelled at your partner. Oi, she didn't yell at me. She told me to keep you in line after you tried to stop OP from doing life-saving chemo treatments. At this point, I walk away before she starts something that she couldn't finish. My partner went off his nut at her, telling her she's lucky to even be in the hospital waiting room when it happens. Since then, I no longer live or visit there. I have other posts explaining why. And our last story was posted by user Gabe Lamo, titled, Entitled Mum Thinks My Pizza Isn't American Enough. Insert mobile spiel. You already know the roles. So a little background. My dad grew up in Sicily, the southern part of Italy, and my mum grew up in Naples. And I was born there, and we moved to America when I was young. So a few nights ago, my parents were hosting a housewarming party. It was kind of fun meeting the neighbours and stuff. My parents insisted on making all the food. I decided I would make up some pizza margarita. I thought pizza would be a good food, as most people would enjoy. I used my mother's recipe, so you know it was authentic. Enter Entitled Mother and Entitled Kid. They both looked like they weighted a collective ton. Did you make the pizza? She said pizza with such disgust, it sounded like it was made from sewer juice and rat crap. Oh, yes I did, it's my mother's recipe. I thought it would be another compliment. I was getting them all night. Entitled kid doesn't like it. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Maybe try those. And I motioned to a plate of arancini, which I also made. Oh, he doesn't like that. Oh, I can see if I can fix you up something else. No, I want real pizza. That's as real as it gets. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. He wants real American pizza. Domino's or Pizza Hut. Oh, I'm sorry about that, but I don't think they're open now. As it was around 1am at the time. If you had time to make that crap- I'm sorry, what? The least you could do is make a real pizza! You Italians stealing us Americans' foods. 
So I put on the fakest customer service smile and say, Gosh, I'm sorry to hear that, but there is nothing else I can do. We're wrapping up the party now. We're leaving. <laughs> Was I supposed to be offended? The entitled kid proceeds to grab my Nintendo Switch and they walk out. I chase after them and tell them to give it back. We deserve this after that sorry excuse for a pizza. I grab the switch for the entitled kid's hands and go back inside. All I wanted was for the night to be over. The entitled mom runs after but trips on the stairs. As she hits the ground, I hear a bunch of glass shatter. Turns out she was stealing my parents' alcohol. Expensive bottles of wine and whiskey all gone to waste. She and entitled kid starts running away. She screams, Y'all a bunch of Nazis, you Italian scum! Arrivederci! Sare il mio fanfanciullo pezzo di merda! Closest English equivalent is, Up yours, Chuck! We just closed the door and she was never invited back. She often shows up when we have guests over and we just turn her away. FYI, she broke a bottle of Crystal Head vodka. That was the worst part. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, that uh, last story. My inspirations for that one uh, come from, of course, Inglorious Bastards. Shout out to that movie if you haven't watched it before. And tell me what you thought of the voices and everything in this episode. I know some people hate them, but most of you guys are really cool and you all love, you all love the voices. Um, and as always, have a good day and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.